when I was in college, my girlfriend and I studied abroad together. And pretty much every weekend that we could, we would go uh, live in some hostel and see some amazing European city. So by the end of the semester, we were pretty sure, we kind of were expert travelers at this point. I could book us a hostel that didn't look anything like something from a terrible horror movie. Uh, when we got there, we could make cool friends. And we had this little um, strategy where most hostels have bunk beds. We would take the linens from the top bunk, share the bottom bunk, and then drape the linens over the bottom bunk so we had like a, a blanket for it. Um, it was like eighth graders had gone to Europe and just had a sweet sleepover. <laughs> But it was great because of what happened at the hostel, we had our own little private space. So at the end of the school year, we decided to take a big 10-day train trip around the Mediterranean, see everything we hadn't seen, enjoy the sun, do it all. And our first stop is in Nice. And we get off the train and I'm very excited saying, oh, the, the user comments on this hostel we're staying at, it's called the Pink Lady Hostel. And they all say, there's this great French lady, she's called the Pink Lady and she's adorable and she's funny. So we walk up and we see this dusty, dirty old cafe and there's like a broken neon light, it's like pink, la hostel. Um, <laughs> and we walk in and there's this really old French woman and she's like bent over and she's got all black on and a black scarf on her head and we're like, this probably isn't the French lady but she's yelling at us in French so that means something. She coughs a couple of times, turns around, walks towards the bar, she picks up one of those ice buckets you put bottles of champagne into, she coughs and then violently starts vomiting into the bucket. <laughs> Welcome to France. Um, so we're like, this is a first, and uh, we probably don't want to get breakfast here in the morning. Um, so she, she just sort of walks off to the people who are eating in the cafe with the bucket of vomit, at which point a woman wearing like worn old, what used to be pink and now is mostly nicotine stained clothes comes out and starts yelling at us in French. Um, and we start trying to explain, we, assuming this is the pink lady, oh, we don't speak French, I got English and she's got Spanish and Catalan kind of down, but we're not really, and she just keeps yelling at us in French. And so we hand her our reservation and she walks to a computer which she doesn't know how to use and then she takes us to an elevator up four floors and all of a sudden we're in her hostel all the while yelling at us in French, not talking to us in French, literally just like, blah, 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 and we're like, no French, okay, yeah. What? <laughs> we get to the fourth floor after one of the most terrifying elevator rides I've ever had. <laughs> And she yells in, in French out to nowhere, and at which point a sort of American looking guy comes out of this room and he, as he opens the door there's like techno bumping and then he closes the door. And he yells back at her in French and they have this big argument in French and we're just staying there holding our bags like, hi! <laughs> and then Pink Lady wanders off <laughs> and the guy turns to us and is like, yeah, Pink Lady's a bitch. Anyway. <laughs> So maybe the consumer reviews on the website weren't right, and this maybe wasn't my best booking so far of our European vacation. But he starts giving us the lay of the land, and he says, okay, to the right here, this is the party room, so if you guys want to get drunk on champagne and go out with us tonight, you can stay here. We're like, nah, it's okay. Um, in the middle room where we're standing, there's two bunk beds on either side of a window and a little kitchenette. And then to the left, there's a closed door, and it's black. Like, the, the, there's no light on inside, and that's weird for a hostel. And we're like, well, what's over there? He's like, well, that's the buzzer, so if you want to get in after like hours, you got to buzz that. But it's not working, so if you're out past when the cafe closes at 2 a.m., you got to sleep on the street. Anyway, I'm going to go back and party, <laughs> and then he just leaves us. So we dump our stuff next to some, some bunk beds and start talking to a little redheaded girl who's an Australian, and she's making some omelets in the kitchenette, and we're kind of getting nowhere, and we're like, so who's staying in the dark room? She's like, oh yeah, that's closed because there's a guy who's hung over, he's a sailor, and another dude who's with him, he's got an ear infection. Anyway, they're both Australians, just like me. My name's Amanda. Now, there's something you should know. When we hear Australian, alarms go off because when you travel abroad, there's like a hierarchy of crazy people that speak English. At the bottom is Canadians, like right here is Americans, British people, and then way the fuck up here is Australians. <laughs> you do not fuck with Australians. And as if to prove my point, after Amanda's given her her life story, this guy rumbles out of the dark black room wearing a button-up shirt and jeans. It's like, what's up, mates? And we're like, hey, um, who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm a sailor. I got a date to go to. And he's already holding a beer. And we're like, well, when's your date? And he's like, two hours ago. And we're like, how? I don't think you have a date anymore if it was two hours ago. He's like, no, 
You gotta keep them waiting. French girls love that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we're like, how's the, so there's a dude with an ear infection? What's going on with that? He's like, oh yeah, 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 no, no, we fixed it. I'm like, how did you fix an ear infection? And he pulls out his digital camera and he turns it around and he shows me. And there's this guy standing in boxers on the digital camera and he's standing like this and he goes, okay, hit me. At which point, dude with the shirt comes in and just cracks him over the head with a backpack. <laughs> and the dude like shakes his ear and is like, nah, you didn't get it. And he cracks him again. <laughs> Australians, okay. <laughs> this guy is like a walking bad uh, of Foster's commercial, like backpack, Australian for medicine. You know? <laughs> So, we're thinking, maybe this time it's not a good idea to make friends who are interesting and foreign. We just get to the fort, make the fort, and get to the fort, and go to bed. Before we go to bed, uh, some Canadians show up, ironically enough. Uh, they, uh, Pink Lady has overbooked, shockingly, so we sell them the upper bunk of our reservation. And they're very apologetic because they're Canadian, and, and we all have a quiet <laughs> night. <laughs> Uh, and we go to bed, and we're like, as, as other people go out to party, because we know after 2 a.m. you can't get back in. And uh, at 4 a.m. I hear the most blood-curdling, screeching noise I've ever heard in my life. It is this electronic beep that, at first, my girlfriend and I wake up, and I'm like, oh god, fire alarm. And we're like, this place doesn't have fire alarms. <laughs> and it's coming from the next door room, the dark room. And it, it's the buzzer, but we're like, the buzzer doesn't work. Why would someone be using the buzzer? But it's 4 a.m. Oh, what's, what's going on? Before we can sort of figure out what's going on, we hear this scream of this Australian accent. It's Amanda, the redhead. And she's yelling up from the bottom, up, up four floors through a closed window. We can hear her yelling, Let me in! Let me in! Now, the door to the dark room where the buzzer is that she is smashing on, is closed and locked, and the only one in it, of course, is the dude with the ear infection <laughs> who's been in there for at least a day and a half. And I'm like, oh shit, oh, this is not gonna end well for her. So she's screaming, let me in, let me in! And we hear him pressing the door go, Amanda, 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 let me in! And he goes, and we hear him walk in the room and then open the window and go, Amanda, is that you? Yes, let me in! And my girlfriend are like, oh god, this poor thing, what? oh, this is awful. And while we're saying that, the guy at the window is like, what? <laughs> she keeps yelling, no, I got robbed and I woke up at the hospital and I just let me in, please let me in. And I turn to my girlfriend, I'm like, I have to get out of this bunk and do something. And she's like, don't leave the fort. We are... <laughs> We're safe in the fort. Don't fuck with Australians. Stay in the fort, Mike. And I'm like, no, the she's not gonna get help at all, and this is gonna end badly. And then she starts screaming, "You motherfuckers, let me in! Fuck all of you!" And we're like, oh god, this is like in the middle of Nice. Everyone's getting woken up by this woman. And so there's this quiet. He hasn't said what yet, and we're like, what's going on? And we hear him walk, and he opens the door, and he looks into our room, and he goes. Guys, uh, Amanda's downstairs. I think she's pissed. <laughs> think, think she's pissed. And of course, uh, who, who else to help her? The Canadians. The Canadian jumps out of bed, runs downstairs, opens the door for her while the guy with the ear infection, which is still, despite number of blows to the head, inflamed and awful looking, holds the door for him. Amanda comes back in wearing, no doubt, a hospital robe and nothing else. <laughs> So we started our day a little bit early, we headed off to Monaco, had a lovely time, and got the hell out of Nice. But that is why I love traveling, because the second you know what's going to happen and you think you've got control over everything, shh, there's a crazy Australian yelling at 4am on the ground floor. Thanks guys, have a good night.